always knew that I wanted to do something with languages and with cultures and mediation and uh, traveling and so yeah something that had to do with other countries and other people and with communication so it came pretty soon it became clear that I was going to become an interpreter but after f I finished school I uh, did an apprenticeship uh, at a bank to have a basis and then I went to Graz in Austria to study at the School for Interpreting, Translation and Interpreting in Graz and um, where I graduated in 1993. Um, the fact of the matter is that in Austria there are not that many uh, international institutions that would be offering um, employment for interpreters and uh, so the entering the private market or become self-employed is actually probably the most likely that uh, young interpreters or translators should look into and you have to make sure that you are the kind of person who can bear being uh, self-employed and independent and not have the security of having the same income guaranteed every month so you have to be the right person for that Anyway, I grew into it slowly because my now partner Maria Niefel at Y Plus already had her company established and she needed some help. And so I grew into it because the, her former partner then left to go and work at the university. So we started to work together in 1994 and are still happily working together and have now um, a very good uh, group of customers who keep coming back to us and, and we have established ourselves very well now in Graz and in, in all of Austria. I love interpreting more than written translation, however, which is something that you have to be aware of that only very few people have the luxury to only do interpreting and not written translation, albeit, you have, as, as I said, you have to be too, it's too, it's, uh, it requires different characters because if you, if you do written translation you have to be loving details and researching and fiddling with sentences and with words and with interpreting you just have to be really quick and dare to make a decision about the words you choose and, and go along with it and not hesitate. On the other hand, working as an interpreter requires or it helps to do some written translation because you just get a better um, you get vocabulary and you you might I m might often work in in areas uh, in the automotive sector for instance that will help me then in conferences of that kind if I uh, was not going to continue to work as an interpreter I've got a huge amount of ideas because that actually goes along with our profession as well that you if you work on the free market as an interpreter you look into so many different fields that you just get then you get an interest for all sorts of things and I had lots of ideas already I wanted to be to do to build up a helicopter business and I wanted to build up a wine shop because I, I specialized in, in wine tasting and did a little bit of wine academy also to work in that field, so I, I thought why, why not uh, build up a wine trade or now I'm connecting with my hobby as I, I love yoga, I would now like to do yoga teaching and that's quite nice if you are self-employed you could always combine your hobby with your profession and you don't have to give it up. Um, what I like most in my job actually is this challenge of uh, being in the booth and having to be able to pick up a message in fraction of sec seconds and then put it in the other language, in the other culture, in the other world without a delay, uh, which is, it, it is an enormous challenge, but if, you, if, you, if it works out well, it, it is very satisfying. On the other hand, it, this uh, has a flip side as well, because it is hard work and this hard work is often not really recognized or appreciated by the audience. Often they would only notice you when a big mistake has been made or when something is wrong with the technology. 
And if it all goes well and smoothly, sometimes they would not notice you and you, you're just an anonymous voice. And many of our colleagues suffer from this, suffer from this lack of importance as a person, as the person they are with a name. But it has in the yeah in the in the recent years it has the awareness of the audience of the of interpreters has uh, increased because more people are now traveling and working in an international uh, context so they they understand about the difficulties of interpreting. Change, however, has during the past years or since I started the fact that at the beginning I did more consecutive or more liaison and now um, it's more simultaneous actually because you get also for smaller conferences you get smaller equipments without a booth and that is just more much more efficient than consecutive because consecutive very evidently takes double as long as a, interp as a simultaneous interpretation. Um, what I would like to change is actually the atmosphere in the teams or with the colleagues because um, it is what we are under a lot of pressure in the in the in the conference, and I know that my I'm working at best if every if I have slept enough, if I'm well rested, and if I if everything's all right, and if the atmosphere and I'm prepared very well. You have to prepare really very well, especially if you have specialized uh, difficult subjects, and. Uh, in addition to that, if then there is a, a poisonous atmosphere in the teams, it, it is, it, it, it's not nice, it is unpleasant. And if you work in a good team, you can do an excellent job, so that's really important. About uh, being specialized in a field or being general, is that in the free market, you cannot, you cannot really allow yourself to specialize. You will automatically specialize because if you, you are good in one field, they keep coming back like in our <clears throat> case it is architecture and art. But I have to be ready to do everything, whether it's medicine or uh, agriculture or automotive sector or anything to do with the EU. You have to be, or law or whatever, it, you have to be ready and um, prepared to do everything. And um, I would like to give as a as an idea and uh, advice to young interpreters that you should always make sure that you are interested in many things, that you keep your minds alert, that you also find out about yourself whether you whether you like whether you can bear um, not you know not having any time for a decision when you when you are translating because you just have to be so fast as the you have to see whether your mind whether your mind is fast enough and whether you can let go of um, being perfectionist because you will become with time you will become better but you have to be just mainly fast and interested in many things and you have to love mediating between people and cultures and you have to love to try to understand what the message of one person is in order to put it into a message for the receiver in their in their uh, mother tongue, and uh, well, the, the lection I learned, the most important lection I learned, is probably that I have to. I learned a lot about myself and being prepared to deal with the limits I meet because you you meet your own limit, limits almost every time you are in the booth because. You have to make the decision in such a short time frame that you will always later on you will notice what mistake you made or what would have been better and you have to live with that. You have to live with that because you have given the best you, you could, probably, that's what you should be aiming for. And uh, you should not be then de depressed or, or discouraged by meeting your limits. You have to live with it, but it's a good lection and what's really good is that you learn so much about so many things in the world and about people.